Hello everybody and welcome to another Puppy School Q&A with myself, Nicole Harris, the Puppy School Tutor in Frimley and Farnborough. Um, my topic today that I'm covering is jumping up. So jumping up at you, jumping up at guests who come into the house, jumping up at other dogs and also jumping up at uh, counter surfaces and things like that. So what I thought would be really useful to start us off today would just be to look at how dogs learn. Because understanding how dogs learn can really help us put a little training plan together. Now, dogs, same as puppies, same as us, we all learn through the consequences of our actions. And if something, if a consequence of our behaviour is that something good happens, we tend to repeat that behaviour. And if the consequence of our action or our behaviour is that um, something not so nice happens, we tend to decrease that behaviour. So with any behaviour that we're looking at, so something like jumping up, we want to look at, well, how can we increase the behaviours that we like and how can we decrease the behaviours that we don't like? Um, now, I tend to get my owners to focus on the positives first because it, we can tell our puppies, no, don't do that, stop doing that, get away from that as much as we like, but we're not actually giving them any useful information about what we'd like them to do instead in those scenarios. So when it comes to training, a really good mantra to get into your head is rather than how can I stop my puppy from doing this is what would I prefer my puppy to be doing instead and how can I reinforce that behaviour? So when it comes to jumping up, um, we really, the behaviour we probably want to be rewarding is keeping four paws on the floor um, and in some cases keeping your bottom on the floor, so putting them into a sit. So that's a nice little easy um, behaviour that we can we can reward. Now, what you decide to reward your puppy with is up to you and it will depend on what the puppy prefers as well. So if your puppy's into treats, then we can use treats to do this training. A lot of puppies are very, very interested in social approval and social interaction as well. So we can use social interaction. So telling them very, they're very good, praise, giving them a little bit of a fuss if that's what they like as well um, to encourage those behaviours to continue. So keeping four paws on the floor means that you get lots of attention and fuss from me um, or a little treat. Now one thing to be mindful of with regards to social interaction, because some puppies find that very very rewarding, we can actually inadvertently reward jumping up. So when puppies jump up, if we give them eye contact, so we look at them, even if we're saying to them no get down, we've looked at them, we've talked to them uh, and in some cases we've maybe pushed them off so we've given them physical contact as well. And for some puppies, that will actually be quite reinforcing. So that's going to encourage the behaviour to carry on. So we do want to be mindful when we're training these things that we want to reward the behaviours that we like. We want to make sure that we're also not accidentally rewarding the behaviours that we don't like as well. Now, when it comes to um, the behaviours that we don't like, we then need to think about, well, how can we prevent those behaviours from occurring again? How can we make it so the puppy doesn't want to repeat those behaviours? Now, we... There are sort of negative ways of doing that. So um, aversive methods of training that mean that we can prevent a puppy from wanting to jump up. I'm not going to go into them because I don't agree with them uh, and I don't think they deserve any airtime at all. Um, the main thing to be mindful of is that there are some pretty horrendous methods out there. But even for some puppies, if we've got a very sensitive puppy, even just saying no to them in a very stern voice can actually be quite aversive to a puppy. Um, and what we want to avoid is creating any sort of fear or anxiety in our puppies um, when we're interacting with them. So I tend to recommend uh, against any methods that mean that we are going to create any negativity, so any, any anxiety um, and trying to use any aversives to prevent behaviours like this. What we can do, however, however, is we can use the concept of uh, removing something that they like from the situation. So, for example, if a puppy jumps up at you and what they're looking for is some sort of attention, we can actually remove that attention. Just say, you know, I'm not going to pay attention to that. I'm not going to give you eye contact. I'm not going to give you um, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to touch you. I might just walk away. Um, by removing that social interaction, which is what the puppy is actually after, um, we are actually punishing that behaviour, but we're doing what's called uh, negative punishment. So the only thing to be mindful with that as a training technique is it can create a little bit of frustration. And frustration is quite an aversive emotion. Um, now, in some cases, the puppies will just go, oh, OK, I'm not getting what I'm after. I'll just stop. 
Um, but there are some puppies that don't cope particularly well with the emotion of frustration. So that depends on a lot of different factors. But certainly genetic, genetics definitely comes into it. There are certain breeds that I find really struggle with frustration. Um, Cocker Spaniels, Terriers being at the top of my list. Um, and in those cases, what can happen is when they get ignored, they just try a little bit harder they sort of persist a little bit harder um, and they keep persisting to the point where it can actually become really really difficult to ignore them um, I used to work in rescue uh, and we had a dog that if we just completely ignored the jumping up behavior he escalated his behavior to jumping up and actually nipping um, and he learned very quickly to nip the very very soft parts of somebody's arms because um, it's very difficult to ignore that and he learned very quickly how to get attention when he wanted it so we do want to be careful when we're using these training techniques um, that we're not creating too much frustration. And this is why it's really, really important to pair that with making sure that we are also reinforcing the behavior that we really, really like. Because if we've got a puppy where we're simply just ignoring them and we're just saying we're going to completely ignore this behavior and then they get very, very frustrated. If they then escalate, we're going to potentially have further problems down the line. So what we want to do is teach them what we want them to do instead so that when they get frustrated, they've got another behavior to fall back on. So they try jumping up. It doesn't get our attention. But then they think to themselves, oh, but hang on. If I keep my four paws on the floor, if I sit, I know that in the past has got me rewarded. So let's try that instead. And then we can reward that behavior. So that's a little brief overview of how I would want to be going about um, thinking about these sorts of um, issues is thinking about how can we reward the behavior that we like? How can we prevent any inadvertent reinforcement for the behaviors that we don't like? Um, and how can we make yeah, how can we make sure that we're just not rewarding them for the behaviors that we don't like? Um, how can we prevent those behaviors from being practiced? So we've got a couple of questions that have been put forward by um, some lovely clients uh, on the puppy school page. So I'm gonna go through those. Um, what I thought was really interesting was three out of the four of you all have five month old puppies. Um, so I certainly think that this is something that maybe crops up a little bit later. So when we've got little puppies who are very small, jumping up doesn't seem that much of a big deal. It's actually quite cute. Most of us quite like it, um, but as they get bigger, obviously depending on the breed as well, some of us find that a little bit unwanted so I think that the ones we've got here are Labrador, Spring Across Labrador and Border Collie so obviously those dogs that are going to be a little bit bigger so as they've got a bit older they've gotten a bit bigger we've now realised oh this is actually a little bit of an issue so it's something to work on. <coughs> Excuse me. So let me go through the questions. So Rebecca, first of all, says um, mine five month old Labrador has been relatively easy to train with her being so food orientated. Uh, but when it comes to a certain dog, there's no controlling her. My sister has a five month old Cavapoo. And when we see them, all she wants to do is jump on her and play fight, which giving the size difference and how it's only going to get bigger is going to get worse. She's fine with other dogs. She likes to play with them, but is nowhere near as bad with them. Thanks. So. The first thing I'd be looking at there is, well, if this is a behaviour that we don't want to continue, we want to make sure that she's not getting reinforcement for that behaviour. Now, I suspect that she's having some really good play with this five month old Cavapoo. Now, play and interaction with this five month old Cavapoo is going to be highly reinforcing. So the jumping up behaviour is getting reinforced heavily. So the first thing we need to look at is, well, can we prevent that from happening in any way? So it might be worthwhile setting up some little sessions where you go and you meet up, but both dogs are kept on lead. So they can't do their little play sessions. Um, I'm not saying don't let them play, but we probably need to teach them that it's not all about play all the time. Now, because they're going to be on lead, that is going to cause some frustration. So we talked about that earlier. They're going to want to play and then suddenly not going to be able to. So we do need to make sure that we are then reinforcing a behaviour that we do like instead. So if you've taught them anything, doesn't have to be anything difficult, something nice and simple, something nice and calm. So teaching them to do a sit or a lie down, just teaching them to be calm in each other's presence and really reinforcing that behaviour. You say that your Labrador's treat orientated. Awesome, pretty typical for a Labrador. So that's what I would be focusing on is teaching her how we want her to behave in the presence of this other puppy. What I often find when you've got two puppies that are very, very good friends is if we spend a lot of our time um, where they just 
all they do is play and they never have any sort of downtime. Um, they do just learn that when we see each other, we just go hell for leather um, and that's all we do. So that would be my advice to you, Rebecca, would be to maybe set up some sessions with your sister where your puppies can come together and they don't do those play sessions, but they learn to actually settle a little bit together. So let's move on to Ellie Jenkins question then. So she has a five month old Springer Cross Labrador who jumps up to get attention from people and jumps up at other dogs to play with them. How are we able to train him not to do this? His recall is good so we can distract him by calling him, but do want him to stop. Thank you. So again, what I'd be looking at there is, are we getting any reinforcement for that behaviour? So is your is your Springer Cross Lab when they jump up to get attention from people, are people paying attention to that? It can be really challenging when you've got a dog that jumps up um, and you go out, because even if you completely ignore this behaviour, if the general public don't, that actually creates a big problem for you because your puppies get accidentally reinforced for the behaviour that you really don't want them to be doing. Um, uh, and again, jumping up at other dogs. If we're jumping up and the other dogs are going, hey, brilliant, this is great, let's play then we're getting reinforcement for that behaviour. What, make, what makes it even more tricky is you might be, puppy might be getting conflicting messages. So some dogs might be saying, hey, let's play. And other dogs might be saying, actually, no, I don't like that behaviour and then telling the puppy off. So we do need to be really, really careful with these behaviours um, that they don't um, get themselves into trouble, get them into tricky situations. And same with people. So um, if your puppy's out walking and um, you come across people who actually don't like dogs jumping up at them, um, they're potentially going to have a negative interaction with someone if someone decides to sort of tell them off or not be particularly nice to them. So the fact that you've got a good recall is fantastic. To be honest, in this situation, what I would be saying is um, usually I'd be saying, well, let's prevent the behaviour from being practised in the first place, because reinfor reinforcement of that behaviour is the thing that's going to drive it from carrying on. So the first thing would be to prevent it. Now, in some cases, if people haven't got a good recall, they have to keep their puppy on lead. The fact that you've got a good recall actually makes this a lot easier. So I would be saying at the moment, you're doing the right thing by calling them back and getting them to come back to you. Maybe at that stage, once puppy has come back to you, you can pop them on lead and then you can do a little bit of training with the person or the dog nearby. Just again, like I talked about with Rebecca, just teaching a little bit of um, uh, calm behaviour. So getting them to sit, getting them to... Um, even just keep four paws on the floor. So making sure we're reinforcing that behaviour in the presence of other dogs and people. Um, it is really tricky because you are reliant on other people not reinforcing your dog. Um, and the general information isn't out there. I can't tell you I had exactly the same problem with my puppy when she was little. She really liked other people and she'd go up and she'd think about jumping up. And you'd say to people, oh, you know, I don't want her to jump up. Oh, it's fine. I don't mind. I, I love dogs. I don't have a problem. And I'm like, yeah, but I do have a problem with this because she's going to be a big dog. Um, and I don't want her learning that that's an appropriate behaviour. So a lot of the time with this, um, this behaviour, the challenge is actually the interactions with other people. So trying to set up situations where you can practice that, where it's a little bit more controlled can really help you with that. Um, so Kirsty Ellsworthy, we've got a five month old border collie who jumps up at anyone who comes through the door and also at me when he wants something. He's been pretty simple to train. Otherwise, any tips would be great. So again, I'm going to come back to that um, that really basic sort of uh, beginning point, which is if we're if we've got a behavior that's carrying on, then they're getting rewarded for it somewhere. So with the he jumps up at me if he wants something. Well, in the past, if he's jumped up at you, have you then given him what he wants? Um, if the answer to that question is yes, then that will be why that behaviour is reoccurring. So what we do need to teach these puppies is that if you jump up at me, I'm not going to give you what you want. But if you put your bottom on the floor or keep four paws on the floor, then you can definitely have what you want. And it's a really, really good mantra to get into your daily routine. Just any time you've got something that your puppy would like. So you've got their food bowl. Um, you've got a chew that you're going to give them. You've got a toy that you're about to throw to them. Just asking them for a sit or even just waiting for them to sit or put their paws on the floor. Asking for a calm, polite behaviour before they get what they're after is a really good, just um, basic sort of strategy to get your puppies to understand that they can't just demand things they want by throwing themselves at you. It's a little bit like how we teach children to say please when they're little. Um, if 
children sort of start throwing a strop saying, I want those sweets in the middle of the supermarket and screaming and shouting, we wouldn't then pick up the sweets and say, OK, you can have them because we're reinforcing that behaviour. Um, but um, if if we say, oh, well, what do you say? Please. So we prompt them. If they say please, they can then have whatever it is they're looking for. Maybe. <laughs> um but the important thing is that we, we can prompt them initially, but you wouldn't expect to be saying to a 20 year old person, well, what do you say? You don't need that prompt anymore. Once they understand what the status quo is and that they're expected to offer a polite behavior before they get something, that becomes the norm. So the same with puppies. You might need to prompt them initially by asking them for a sit or, or sort of yeah, prompting them to get them to offer the behavior you want. But longer term, they're gonna learn this is what's expected in this situation. Um, so when it comes to the jumping up at anyone who comes through the door, um, again, has has that behaviour been reinforced? Have we got um, attention for that? So have people sort of paid attention? I get this a lot, you know, when we come through the door, if we've had a bit of a rubbish day at work, we come in and our puppy comes up to us and gives us a bit of a fuss and we just say, yeah, oh, I'm so glad to see you. Um, we've actually reinforced any jumping up behaviour at that point. So we really need to be very strict with ourselves as well and make sure that we are not accidentally reinforcing that behaviour. But then also helping the people who are coming into our house as well and teaching that these are the these are the rules of the household. We don't pay attention to puppy if they jump up. Now, if you've got people visiting the house who are going to find that very difficult, whether that is because they are they are elderly uh, or they're worried. Um, so el I've got an elderly grandmother who's got very, very papery skin. So actually to have a dog jump up at her is very scary for her. So in that situation, we would manage that so that it didn't happen in the first place. We wouldn't have a puppy jump up at her. There are some people who are very, you know, very worried about dogs. So we don't want our puppies to be jumping up at those. So it might be that in that situation we have a puppy on lead, preventing them from practicing that behavior. Again, going back to that idea of reinforcing the behavior that we like. So asking for a sit or just rewarding them for having four paws on the floor, whether that's with treats or social praise, whatever it is that your puppy really enjoys. Um, and then we can make sure that they are learning the most appropriate way to behave in those situations. So a lot of these situations, it requires a little bit of training and setting up of um, practice situations before you're in in situ and before you find yourself in a real life scenario because sometimes especially with people coming through the door it's a very exciting time for a puppy oh it's a new person i want to go and say hello so their brain sort of switches off a little bit um, and their ability to think properly switches off a little bit so trying to train in that scenario can be quite difficult so making sure you're setting up training situations before those real life situations happen can really help so finally, we've got a question from Jenny Martin. Um, our cockapoo jumps up. Uh, we ignore him and turn our back, have thrown food on the floor as people arrive, totally ignore him, but nothing works. OK, so what I would be saying there is if something isn't working, it means that we haven't identified the reinforcement properly. So what I mean by that is your Cockapoo will be repeating that behaviour because they are getting a reward from somewhere. So something is re encouraging them to repeat that behaviour. So what we need to do is look at, well, what is it about that situation that's making them repeat that behaviour? I find with cockapoos, they're quite bright. So is it that we've got a cockapoo that's learning that I jump up and then people get the treats out? So then I get rewarded. So they think it's the jumping up and then the sitting that gets the reward. Um, so it could be something like that. Um, again, because we've got a cockapoo, we've got that cocker spaniel genetics in there. So they do struggle with frustration a little bit as well. So if you're ignoring him a lot and turning your back, are we getting frustrated and then escalating that behaviour a little bit? So then it's becoming a lot more difficult to ignore and you sort of persevere, persevere, persevere. And then eventually you go, oh, will you just stop? Um, which means that we end up with a puppy that goes, oh, OK, if I keep going, eventually someone will pay attention to me. For some dogs, even if they only get rewarded once every 50 times they jump up, that's enough to keep that momentum going so the real key to this behavior or to, to this training is to make sure you are consistent and make sure everybody in the household is consistent so those of you who've got big families uh, so um, you know maybe mum dad couple of kids um, it's a lot more difficult to do this sort of training because it's a lot more difficult the more people there are in the household the more difficult it is to be consistent so 
that's another thing to consider as well is, is everybody being consistent in the household. I would suggest, Jenny, that if we've got a situation where you're totally ignoring him but nothing works, it means that whatever you're doing at the moment is not the right training technique for your cockapoo. Um, so what it might just be that whatever you're doing just needs a little tweak, um, because if you're completely taking social attention away from that behaviour and you're then rewarding the behaviour that you do like, if you were putting that in place absolutely consistently, um, that should be effective so the fact that it's not being effective means that it's not the setup isn't quite right so without seeing the situation and without being able to come in and see exactly how you're setting it up and exactly how you're doing the training it's a little bit difficult for me to say um, but my suggestion would be to get in touch with maybe your local puppy school tutor to see if they can give you a little bit of an extra hand with that um, but I suspect we maybe there's been a bit of a consistency issue there somewhere um, but do let us know in the questions. Um, so that's all the questions that were put through from Facebook. So thank you very much for listening. And I hope that was helpful to everybody. Um, anybody who asks any questions, if you've got any further comments, um, please do feel free to pop um, any more questions in the uh, in the comments below. And I'm happy to come back to you and answer anything else. Um, and if you've got any further questions and you think you need a bit more help, obviously do get in touch with your local puppy school tutor as well. So before I go, I just wanted to say that um, obviously with the current climate, um, puppy school, we are trying our best to uh, make sure that our puppy school tutors are able to continue providing good advice and support for all of our clients, um, whether that is on a one to one basis um, in classes, which unfortunately a lot of those classes are now winding down um, or uh, via online systems. So um, we are trying our very best to make sure that we can continue providing that support and advice for our clients. Um, so with things like this, the Q&A. So so if this has been helpful to you um, and or you've got friends who've got puppies and you think this resource would be helpful for them, please do share the video far and wide. Let people know about it. Let people know that we are on hand to help um, throughout this very difficult time. Um, we're very aware that obviously we've got a lot of puppies out there who are potentially owners are going to struggle to get that advice. So um, we want to try and do as much as we can to help. So please, please do share far and wide and um, get in touch if you've got any other problems. Um, so thank you very, very much. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Bye.